Hey, y'all. Welcome to Harps Court. Got a real cool guest for you this afternoon. Uh, Spud Webb, very well-known ex-NBA basketball player. And how you doing, man? I appreciate you joining me. Oh, man. Thanks for having me. You know, it's anytime you get people that uh, you really uh, respect and appreciate, I appreciate that. you jump up to go do those type <laughs> of things because, you know, growing yeah. up here and you playing with the Mavericks, uh, mm-hmm. we in the backyard trying to play like you and Mark Aguirre and all those guys. Right, so right. We, we, we respect you to the you, fullest. Yeah, yeah you, you're aging me, but I'll take that. <laughs> I, I feel old sometimes, to be honest with you. You know, we're doing, everybody's doing a podcast now. Mm-hmm. If you look around, there's a podcast here. There's a podcast there. So everybody is kind of getting into this podcast thing. In your opinion, what makes a good podcast? Yeah, I get uh, emails every day about, uh, you know, different guys' podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I watch a lot of them so right. cause, so I can uh, see what guys are doing, see what, what sh- uh, you know, people are doing, uh, people they have on there. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I like it to have that different platform, uh, you know, especially uh, when guys that you see that play, they give an insights that uh, – you no, know, some people don't get. Mm-hmm. Uh, they put you in uh, peop- in front of people that you might not get to see or talk to, and even know something about them that you think that they all they do is shoot basketball or catch right. a football. Mm-hmm. You let them know that they are human and and and, and uh, things like that. You know, when we were growing up, like in elementary, junior high school, they always asked that question to most of the little kids: "What do you want to do?" When you grow up, I know damn well you didn't say play basketball. Oh, no. Hell no. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what, what were your long I mean, term? And it's hard to so even know what, what you want to do. When when we were growing up, you know, your parents were your, your idol, mm-hmm. who you want to be like. So it wasn't no TV, wasn't no <laughs> right. YouTube. So you couldn't be like... Man, did you you see Dr. J Ladd? Like, who you saw Dr. J Ladd? <laughs> right. On what? You know. <laughs> so we thought our parents. We thought our parents. So. When I got to like, I don't know, eight, ninth grade, I seen Dr. J play on late night TV because mm-hmm. you up waiting for your parents to come home from about six jobs they've been to. That's right. So, that's right. So that's how I got into basketball. But, you know, everybody around here, we thought we was going to be the next Roger Starbuck or Tony Dorsett or Drew Pearson because we only had football. But the Mavericks didn't come to like my senior year. Right. Senior year in high school. High school. Yeah. 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 So the Mavericks didn't come. You? The males come and then you uh, f- fall in love with uh, basketball. You go uh, want to go to college and play and, and um, you know, it's a football state. Of course. <laughs> so they're putting a the high school football game on for they put the NBA on. So all my buddies played football. So when I started to uh, wanted to go to college, all of them didn't didn't want to go. So, uh, you know sister and brother then went to college, so I said, I got to go. They went right, and graduated. Right. Right. Went to a pretty good school, too, yeah, North Carolina so, State. Yeah, so I ended up where Midland first, junior college right, first. Right, right, I where, remember that. Where we won a national junior college championship before I went two years at NC State. You know, we, uh, we, we, we lost an icon in Bill Russell. Mm-hmm. And I know you know Bill from your mm-hmm. Sacramento days playing out in, uh, in Cowtown. What, what, what kind of, when you think Bill Russell, man, I mean, surely we're pioneers, we're, 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 Basketball addicts, mm-hmm. and we followed the game and know the history of the game. What kind of impact, but do you think a guy like Bill Russell made on the NBA oh. as a whole, from a social standpoint, and obviously as a as a champion? Well, we wouldn't be sitting here today <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for for Bill Russell. You know, uh, when you get through playing, you get to you know meet those guys up close. So you be in the green room in the back, you know, as you're waiting to do stuff with the NBA, it's hurry up and wait, right? So you're sitting back there with Bill, and he's just telling these all these stories Crazy about stories. you, like, and these young guys are just walking by these guys, and they sacrifice all this, like, yeah. not playing, boycotting all star games, putting together uh, uh, the uh, players association so guys could get paid regularly yeah. when guys were like playing the season and not even getting paid for the playoffs. And then you're looking like, man, right. Now that's, that's, you know, that's that icon when you think like, you know, Martin Luther King, mm. you know, you know, Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali, uh, Bill Russell. You just don't know if some guys could even do that you right. know, today, you know, cause the sacrifice, they could easily have been blackballed, never played again. Matter of fact, he told us that's how the Players Association started when they Elgin Baylor <laughs> said that he wasn't going to play. Right. 
in the game, and that's how the Players Association started out of something to protect to players, to protect and tails, get, get a voice. and get a union. So that's you know, those guys you look at and just like, man, they just don't. You people, we just don't know what they went through. What what, what what's been the highlight of your life? Not maybe it's the NBA, maybe it's something else. Who knows, right? But what what's been the highlight? And what are you passionate about now, Spud? Yeah, man. Um, uh, I just fell in love with basketball. I, I didn't care what you know, uh, what it what cost it was to <laughs> play. Uh, just a passion to go out and play and things like that. Uh, you know, we, when you're growing up, you just wanted to play all sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I you just want to be with your friends, play all sports. I was lucky enough that uh, we they built a boys and girls club in our neighborhood. That probably saved all our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we've been a statistic too growing up in uh, in uh, South Dallas, Oak Cliff, or whatever you want to call it, Holland Hills. Mm -hmm. When it get real bad, they give <laughs> Over you there. when they give it when they get real bad, they give you a section, Holland Hills. So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that's the area I was from, Holland Hills, mm -hmm. which uh, which not many people make it out of there. Uh, I can't think of about three or four professional athletes that uh, ever came out of that area. But is your mo your mother's not deceased? She's still here? Yeah, my, my yeah. dad passed a year ago, but I knew my mom's that. still here. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew that your father had in, uh, a while back. But in any event, do you ever tease your mother and ask her why she hurt, had you so early? Are you, I as mean, far yeah. as salaries are concerned in the NBA now, <laughs> he'd be worth $100 million right now. Yeah, you're like you born too early, like they always say. Yeah. People born too early. You see some guys I I see today, and they'll say, "Man, he made a hundred million dollar play." I like, I don't remember him playing. You know? Right, right. But uh, you know, you change the structure is really where I want to go with this. Would, uh, would you do anything to change? Oh yeah, you, you, because you can't, be, you can't be against people making money. No, not at all. You can make your not money, at all. but a lot of people not earning the money now. So do do you think something has to change? As far as guaranteed contracts, I think so I think so forth. by uh, you know um, watching a lot of this stuff, I think they're going to change the years. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, uh, guys ain't going to be able to sign four and five year long deals because mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, you hate to bring up one person that messes it up, but mm -hmm. uh, you know it's a that's a lot. But you know you you look at them and go yeah we we or NBA players are making. They're making a lot of money, and you're happy for them. But, you know, at the same time, you think that they should be spreading that between former players, the WNBA, mm -hmm. yeah. even, even the gold trotters and right. stuff like that there. Well, so, the owners are making it, too. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. I mean, you can't pay it unless you make it. Right. And the owners are certainly benefiting quite a quite a bit. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to take you to uh, – so you win in the slam dunk contest, man. Uh -huh. That uh -huh. uh, I thought that's what that's what you would say would have been your highlight, the highlight of your career, because that was here in Dallas. Uh -huh. And tell me you knew you were gonna do that when you were when you were growing up, that you were gonna <laughs> <laughs> Well, um I mean it's it's tough for me to pick, you know, that one point as you yeah. asked that question. But that was a huge moment though for you. I was there. Oh, no question. Uh, yeah, no I, question. I saw uh, your family there. I remember it like it was yesterday at Reunion yeah. Arena. Yeah, just me playing basketball was my my highlight. You know, mm -hmm. playing the NBA at my size, mm -hmm. never no no draft, no just just nothing to look forward for. But the dunk contest was uh you know something that Doc Rivers when I won, he like man you gonna never live that down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like didn't understand it at the time, and like you know me and Doc talk all the time. Man, you told me that it's like everywhere you go, everybody say they were there, and like you know. Re reunion arena on the whole like 18 to 20,000 100,000 people that told me they were there but um, you know it's front of your hometown you know you mess up that's what they remember so uh, <laughs> you didn't that, press, that pressure is on but I knew the repertoire of dunks I could do I, I had been doing these dunks for over uh, three years probably three or four years so uh, I just never did them at practice or after mm -hmm. practice because you know back then man you practice hard then after practice, you know, the, the veterans make you play on one-on-one -on -one or, yeah. or shoot free throws and things like that. So you didn't have time to be, like, plus you didn't have YouTube to look and see, you know, what dunk is peop what people are doing. All you had to go off of was with Dr. J and, and Larry <laughs> Hansen. David Thompson. David Thompson, you yeah. know, things like that. So 
Uh, I just knew when I, you know, get in a dunk contest after we get through playing 100 games at Holland Hill Recreation Center, we would do dunk contests. Okay. You know, every dunk you can imagine, we we sit there after playing three, four hours of walking to the gym and then doing a dunk contest. So when the dunk can start, I know I know what repertoire of dunks I could do. Mm-hmm. I was just hoping Dominique run out of dunks. Right. <laughs> your boy. Yeah. <laughs> your, your teammate. And That's he had it. never seen me because dunk at practice uh, because I was so busy trying to stay on the team. Uh, trying to uh, help the team, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So I didn't, I didn't have time to sit around and worry about a dunk contest. You know, we're coming off of the 75th anniversary year mm-hmm. for the uh, for the NBA. 75 top guys. Who 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 was the guy that you thought but should have been on there that wasn't on? There? I mean, I mean, there I, a lot of guys that 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 got snubbed or whatever you want yeah. to call it. I mean, I don't even call it that. And to me, in all due respect to the new school that that were on there, Dame Lillard. I'm probably Dame's biggest fan. Me love too. Love him. I love him to yeah. death. Watch him every night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really enjoy him. But there are a couple of guys that ugh, that were a little yeah. bit suspect, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, mine too. I yeah. mean, yeah. Who, I mean, who, who, who for you? I I know people don't like him now, but how you lead Dwight Howard off that? You can't. I don't. I don't know how you do that. I mean, Alex English. I don't even know if he was on there, but Alex was not. How you leave him off and he led the league and scoring like what three, four years in a row? I don't know. Yeah, I, I know some more guys. Like I think some people saying like Tony Parker. It was it was some more guys that. I, no, I don't. I don't like, agree with Tony Parker. Parker. I'll do respect. But, to Tony. Yeah, but what does Damon Lillard do it that he belongs on there ahead of uh, Tony Parker? You tell me. I'm asking you. <laughs> I don't know. There are a lot of guys. You know, I had a lot of success against Gary Payton and kind of turned my nose up at him being there. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm, so I'm, I, I, I looked at the stats and then look at Tiny Archibald. He led the league in scoring in his one year. Yeah. But other than that, I mean. <laughs> it's just kind of strange. I, I just don't know what the criteria is, criteria for, is for who gets on because – I want to talk about this guy. Kevin Johnson went to Cal, if I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. played with the Phoenix Suns for a long time. Never bring his name up. (laughs) Why? And I ain't seen nobody stop him ever. Right. Uh, I mean, you can slow him down, but you can't stop that guy in a pick and roll at any time in open court. So I I, I don't know. I don't don't know why he wasn't even mentioned, even when they talk about uh, point guards. Uh, they talk about Stockton, but I, I got like 10 guys I picked before I picked Stockton on my team. Mm-hmm. I mean, all-time leading uh, assist, but yeah. I'm not picking him. Because but. you probably, you know, the reason I say Kevin and uh, I said, I'm sorry, Rod Strickland, I, I know a oh, lot of guys. God. That I That's could, another that one I was going to get to. It's, <laughs> it's hot rod. Yeah, it's a funny story with uh, Rod. We was in, I, I, I didn't want to be in Sacramento at the time anyway, yeah. and and we were getting ready to play them in Portland, and we had Bobby Hurley the, the rookie year. I mean, yeah, everybody Bobby. wanted to go against Bobby. Bobby. It was like, oh, like why did, yeah, yeah, I'm like, why do you hate Duke, this dude? Right? Man, yeah, this dude is crazy. the best guy you'll ever meet. Yeah. But uh, we were in the in the locker room. I didn't want to be in Sacramento at the time, and and, and Gary say, Gene, like, no, you go down. Uh, they'll say, Derek, give me a synopsis on uh, Kevin Johnson, mm-hmm. keep him from going left or right or whatever. Mm-hmm. Scouting report. Scouting report. He yeah. said, Spud, get a scouting report on Rod, Rod Strickland. I'm like, I can't. I ain't stopped him yet. <laughs> right. And you can't stop Rod. I said, I mean, this is the best interior passer yeah. you would ever see. Yeah. And he, he's not a jump shooter. And you're like, I got to keep him out the lane. Got it. Yeah. And you can't. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very difficult, too. They're just, I don't know, for whatever reason, man, I look back on guys that gave me problems as a player, and that's how I kind of rated guys, you know, like Fat Lever, yeah. uh, walking triple-double. They talk yeah. about triple, do- triple doubles. Fat did that in his sleep. J- right. j- just one of those guys that just had that dominance. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just throw out a couple of names, and you just give me your thoughts on them as players and, mm-hmm. you know, a scouting report, if you would, but on some of these guys, Mookie Blaylock. Yeah, Mookie, man, I mean, like uh, Doc Rivers, you, and Mookie. Man, I'm like, you cannot be fucking around with the ball around right. these guys because they fucking hands are so good and strong <laughs> yeah. that if you don't get it off, you know, when the guy come off a pick, you're trying to make a pass, this guy going to take it, steal it, uh, defend it, deflect it. 
So uh, that's what I thought of, of Mookie. The best, uh, him and Doc Rivers, you guys, y'all had the best base defense. Mm-hmm. You know? I appreciate Sometime it. Sometimes you come at guys and they go, what the fuck? I got your money. I'll give it to you now. <laughs> <laughs> but you can come with you guys. You, Doc, uh, you three guys. Yeah. You, Doc, and uh, Mookie, you can come at you guys at full speed and y'all got this base to slow you down. Mm-hmm. So most you guys don't put don't Walker, you don't put Oh, Daryl, yeah, Daryl. Well, that's when hand checking. Daryl <laughs> right. can Daryl can get away with hand checking, yeah. but but you guys had a good base where y'all like you know you going this way. It ain't no you ain't picking no different ways you gonna go. Yeah. And then when 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 you guys are strong enough to put hands on guys, uh, your elbow on guys when they change it a little bit, where you can guide guys where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the the difference that I see that Mookie. Mookie was strong enough and played a good enough defense. Couldn't shoot that well. But, right. But uh, uh, Not better but, as, yeah. as as his career progressed. Yeah. I was just talking to uh, our producer, Ted. You just met Ted when you came mm-hmm. in here in, in, the, uh, in the studio. And I was saying to him that I could argue mm-hmm. that Mark O'Guire was the best offensive player ever to play in Dallas. What would you say to that? Am I reaching? Am no. I am I talking just to be talking? No, no, no. So, <laughs> yeah, so explain it. Explain it to the people because so they've seem to have forgotten. Yeah, how so, fucking good Mark was. Yeah, when me and Mark go places and they look, they go, you know, they they, they know it's a basketball player because yeah. is, is he tall with me, right? <laughs> right. And I'm like, it's Mark Aguirre. They're like, that's Mark Aguirre, right? He's he was that size that that got his shot off. I'm like, man, when we played. Uh, Kathy Russell, our assistant coach, he's like, all right, you don't overplay Mark, you're going to get over 40 on you, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. He said, yeah, if he put that big old butt on me, I, mm-hmm. I can't let him put that big old butt on me because his hand's so big to get the ball. But, man, this guy could even pass, score. I mean, you know, he was the typical, prototypical small forward when we were coming along. And people don't appreciate it. I told them, folks, go look at the stats over there at the Mavericks uh, thing, how long it took Dirk to pass Here, him. Go ahead. I'll, you, you keep talking this, but I will give you. I say, go look at the I stats. I will give you Mark Aguirre's oh, numbers. I, how many Mark was here? Like eight, six years? Seven years. And, Seven, it, and it took how many Dirk? How many years to pass him? They don't believe Nothing me. against Dirk. Dirk, no. We I mean, Dirk, Dirk changed yeah. the game, yeah. you know, but I'm just saying. He and Mark averaged 20 points a game for their career. Both mm-hmm. of those guys did. You talked about the assists. Um, Dirk was probably a better rebounder right. than Mark was because that wasn't. Neither was good defense, but. <laughs> no, neither one of them. I mean, they, they took the Dirk out of the D out of Dirk's Dirk. name. And they definitely didn't put a D yeah, in Mark's Mark name, right? I guarantee, because he didn't guard either. But, I mean, Mark, he led the league in scoring a couple of years, yeah. man, 30 points yeah. a game. And I just think. He's one of those guys, when I start thinking about the guys that are going into the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. I think Mark Aguirre had a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, I really I, do. I, and I, I think if you you do your due diligence and ask the people that he played against, they would echo the same thing. Oh, yeah, Mark. I used to hear Dominique, uh, Bernard King, all of them, Bert, let's talk about how, how good he was. Like, when you see those uh, type of guys talk about a guy, his offensive skills and and uh, you can see in the eyes that that when that game comes that they got to have their stuff together playing against Mark. You, you, you know that that's he's on that level of a. Uh, of well, scoring. I mean, I mean, Spud, listen, man, and let's be real about this shit. And I don't know why his jersey not retired. I still haven't figured that out yet. Because it's not our place to do it. It's, <laughs> we're not responsible to retire Mark's jersey. That's uh, that's in somebody else's hands. But I look at the Hall of Fame. Right mm-hmm. last year, Ben Wallace. <laughs> got into the Hall of Fame. First ballot, Spud. And and all due respect to these guys, man. Dennis Rodman, first ballot, Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. You talked about Alex English. How in the hell is Mark Aguirre not I, getting his due, man? I do not know, man. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it because I don't know if People have to have uh, somebody up there talking for them, or, or it shouldn't. Even well, a lot come of to it that. had to do with with supposedly his attitude. Well, shit! If that's the <laughs> case, how did Dennis get in? Yeah, and man. we love Worm. I mean, we, I'm not trying to take yeah. anything away from anybody else, but I am trying to 
just put some sub- substance on Mark Aguirre as a player. I don't give a shit how he left here. I, I don't care about all of that. And I know he didn't leave in the in the in the perfect way. There is no perfect way to get right. traded and go to another team, right? Right. And he just so happened to win two championships when he got to Detroit, by the way, too. But Mark was an animal, man. He was he yeah. was a, a super super. He was a machine. A That's what star. he had on his sneakers was machine. Yeah. Because he could get buckets, man. And yeah. and he's just been. He's I don't, falling I don't by the wayside, know. man. I know. It's like he never played. It's it's like you know. I I t- I mean, you sit at the barber shop or the cigar <laughs> bar or wherever, trying to <laughs> cigar trying bar to, trying to. <laughs> explain this to the guys and then they go look it up and they come back and look, they look at you like he was a hell of a player. Like, he a hell of a player. Like a superstar duh. in our league. Yeah. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. Yeah. One, one, one more guy. You talked about Rod that, that that's extremely underrated yeah. as a player in my opinion was my, my uh, used to be my teammate here. Got drafted in the same year. It's Dale Ellis. Mm-hmm. I say Dale Ellis, you say what? I said one of the best shooters ever. I said, uh, they talk about Steph Curry. I think his dad was a better shooter. I don't know about Actually, that. Dale, Dale could shoot it now, no uh, question. Dale, when I think of Dale Ellis, uh, I'm, I'm talking about those guys that if they played today, they'd be, I guess they'd get them $200 million because right. that's all they did was make threes. I mean, one of the best shooters ever when you think of Dale. Yeah. I mean, uh, Dale Ellis, I I I mean, you never left him. And you, right. You trapped back from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You stay home on him. You stayed home. Uh, I mean, that's that's when I hear them talk about shooters. That's first name that come to my mind is mm-hmm. Dale Ellis. Mm-hmm. Who, who talked the most trash, most most shit to you? <laughs> when he was on the court. I, I mean, I didn't I didn't pay no attention to it, but I mean, right. like like hear guys talking. Uh, Trash. I didn't really have nobody really just really talk trash. You uh, kept a low know. profile, but yeah, I, I try to keep a low profile because <laughs> I didn't want to get pissed off in the game. <laughs> right. Like, like uh, when the, uh, like uh, Doc Rivers said, "Y'all go ahead and you know post Bud up. You gonna do nothing but piss him off, and y'all gonna y'all gonna be in foul trouble rushing yeah. up and down the court." Mm-hmm. But you know, you hear different guys talk like Larry Bird. You know, when I tell people Larry Bird talk trash, but it, it ain't the trash. Even when Michael say something, it wasn't the trash where it was demeaning. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, I'm going to shoot left hand at this time. Right, or, right. Or you why put you put a white boy guard. Well, a white guy. I did it was funny. It was funny. Uh, he uh, he passed by a locker room. He like, there's nobody in here can guard me. <laughs> but he was just playing, though. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he was friends he with uh Was with it training. you all that, that he gave that? Were you on that team in when Atlanta he, during the told, preseason? No, no, no. That that game he scored sixty something. Yes. Yeah, that was in New Orleans. That was the year before I got there. Oh, okay. But I hear them talk about it all, all the time. All the time. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah, but where, yeah. Where, where do you think the league is right now as a whole? New stars. You got Luca, um, Embiid. You just got so Jokic. So yeah. many superstar players, yeah. man. You think about yeah. it. You know, we were just talking about about uh, Dame Lillard, Tatum. The list goes on and on. You already talked yeah. about Steph and. Yeah, what man. he means to the league, but every but team is it in a good is it in a good place right now in the NBA? Um, I think so because they got you know they got all the TV revenues where they see them there all the time, you know. So every team have a superstar, uh, allegedly superstar. Um, so uh, I watch the NBA every night because uh, you know I like it's, the game, and it's part of your work, and it's part of my work. So. Yes. But you know, all you know. Sometimes you get tired of the three pointers, and you want to see a pick and roll, somebody pin down, mm-hmm. uh, somebody come off a pick or make a pass, something like that. We we rarely get, but unless you're watching them real good teams uh, that run that that's uh, flex, and we call uh-huh, it flex. now. <laughs> what was it about? Yeah, I can't remember what I don't it was. Know, motion, <laughs> motion. That's exactly what it was. the same so, thing. It's the same thing because there's a yeah. point guard. I used to steal our everybody signs so. If everybody had the same play, they just had different calls. So when I had uh, Brendan Malone, uh, Brendan Sir on the bench, I used to talk to him out to the games or whatever on the playbook. Mm-hmm. If it's four down, I know, you know, it's gonna circle the four man or else he gonna four side. He gonna come out and pick. But now you got just dribble, dribble, shoot, dribble, mm-hmm. dribble, shoot, fast break, shoot a three, shoot a three. So sometimes you got to 
look at the game as it is now. Because mm -hmm. when, when yeah, appreciate I, it for what it is. Yeah, when I look at players now, I go, if you can't shoot a three, man, you're not coming to the G League. We, the Mavericks shoot threes. Everybody shoot threes. Mm -hmm. If you, you you can't shoot a three, then man, you need to go and work on your three point shooting. So. But the the talent in the league, man, these guys. Uh, uh, you think they're uh, more talented than we than the eighties well, and the nineties? But AAU helped the NBA. I don't know. I heard Kobe say it messed it up, or uh, it helped it because you got everybody play the same position. Mm -hmm. Everybody six nine, six ten can run, jump, and shoot threes. Mm -hmm. So if you can't do that, you're not gonna be no superstar in the NBA. Give me a Dominique Wilkins story. <laughs> <laughs> Dominique is a different breed of people. Yeah, uh, Nick. You know, we I know mean, Nick is the dude. Think he's open in the phone booth, man. I mean, he. <laughs> I, I, I said, Nick. Uh, it's so many stories with Nick because I was there six years with Nick, and I was, you know, with him every day. Uh, so uh, we were playing uh, Miami, and uh, <laughs> and uh, they was an expansion team, and uh, you know, Nick saw. I think it was Janet Jackson or somebody in San Diego. Doc Rivers like, "Spoil, you ain't getting no fucking shots tonight." Because <laughs> <laughs> Janet Jackson was in the stand. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing we know, Miami expansion team, and they up, they up twenty <laughs> on us at that time, right? Right. And, and Fatello comes in there, you know the Italian. He got the f bombs going there. Yeah. You know, you know, pass the ball, and you know, and uh, so you know, and he he fired right back. Fuck. You. <laughs> right. say, you, you're, you're so selfish You want to even fucking pass the ball to Spud And you call him your best friend <laughs> But Nick man I'm going to tell you something though We be sitting there Me and Doc be sitting there watching film And we end up watching him man It's like this yeah. dude is unbelievable mm -hmm. talented Yeah. And we didn't know what we really had But we didn't give him enough help uh, to for him to go to a championship or something like that, but man, this dude was a bona fide superstar. Man, everywhere we went, he was like Michael Jackson going places with him. Mm. Yeah. Rock star, rock star, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, what you know? A lot of money floating around in the NBA, right? Doctors make a lot of money. Lawyers make a lot of money. The the money is just there. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you find it? Hard to be married, but as a professional athlete, as a lawyer, I, as a successful person, do you find it? Because we're both single, man. you and I. So, yeah. when you're successful, do you find it difficult to? Yeah, uh, 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 to I don't, be I, married. I, I you're a professional. To, uh, I used to hang out with all the guys that were married, just you know, to meet their families, their mm -hmm. kids, and stuff like that. I'm, and most time I'm laying like. Man, I am too selfish to mm -hmm. be married because I'm always trying to work on my game. Mm -hmm. I'm always no trying time. to get better, and I just I ain't no way I could make a commitment to uh, to a person knowing that I want to go out and work. You know, I got I, I want to go play basketball. I got to travel to do this or camp or whatever. And I mean, you leaving a family at home during the season already. Mm -hmm. And I used to look at them guys and go, man, you got to be a I guess a Real, real committed man to to do that. So, I guess I was. Uh, I'm gonna put yourself in the name with Derek Jeter, but he was one of those guys. You 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 hear him talk about how committed he was to to the game, mm -hmm. I, and I and that's the way I look at me. I was like committed to helping people. Mm -hmm. I was committed to uh, you know getting better as a basketball player, let alone with traveling the world. And it's just hard to do that with a you know somebody. <laughs> want you there every day and mm -hmm. it's selfish but hey yeah so it is hard it, it's very hard it's hard to be married it got to be i i can't speak on i've never been married but right it got i can't <laughs> i know you have <laughs> and, I, and at 60 years old i want a significant other yeah you know what i mean i, yeah. I want somebody in my life i, I don't think any of us at this no. stage in our lives are perfect but no. it just seemed like that perf the the sports when you're successful, it just seems like it's a little more difficult to uh, to maintain a solid it is. Uh, Christian relationship. It is, man. Uh, um, my sister, the pastor, I go to their church every Sunday. Uh, if I don't make it doing COVID stuff, you watch online. And, yeah. And every time I go there, because we have to take our mom, she in a wheelchair. Right. And, you know, your mom, she ain't, she ain't going to hold nothing on you like, 
you know, <laughs> when you gonna get married, you know, throwing right. that all at her. I'm, I'll be dead before you get married. Like, that's a lot of pressure, Mom. <laughs> right, right. But I always want, you know, you want somebody uh, at our age, you want somebody you can spend time with, rest of your life with, things like that. But, man, it just, just ain't happened. I, I guess I'm kind of a, Kind of low key, uh, uh, don't you are. do many things. I go play golf. I go to the cigar bar as an old man do, and and go home. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to to I guess meet somebody like that. But hey, I'm, I told my mother I'm happily single right now. <laughs> <laughs> happily single, right? <laughs> hey, if you weren't a professional NBA basketball player, what would you have done with your life? You think? Yeah. So so when I. Uh, Left NC State, there wasn't no guy in the NBA of uh, my size playing. So I looked at my sisters and brothers all going to school and teaching. So I said, man, I, I got to do this. Then I got to, you know, get my education so I can uh, maybe go coach, uh, mm -hmm. go, you know, do stuff like that. And uh, so, man, uh, the first day I went to uh, – do the student teaching thing. I was like, man, they ain't made for this. <laughs> a different breed of kids. I mean, I mean, let me call this call this guy back and tell him I want to play summer league and and, yeah. and, and maybe that's when uh, I had Bill Blakely as uh, my agent. Yeah, he I was like, that. he was like, uh, you know, the Gold Trotters are calling. Uh, he said, I don't want you to play with the Gold Trotters. He said the Lakers and and Atlanta may want to bring you to camp. I said, well, you know, just you know, let me know so I end up going there camp in Atlanta because I figured I had a better chance of mm -hmm. uh, making the and team. And Doc fell in love with you. Well, no, you were playing with Doc. At I was playing time. with Doc. We and, just got and, in the league. And, yeah. and actually, actually, uh, you know, during the training camp, me and Doc became real tight because he, he had broke his wrist mm -hmm. and something. I so remember. he was working with me, you know, out uh, practice stuff. And actually, Derek, I ended up, Doc didn't make it back to the first three or four games. So I started mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the first game. So, the first game that uh, I saw, NBA game that I saw, I started and played in, I mean, started in and scored 18 points and 10 assists. So it was because Doc Rivers was hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've been friends ever since I was there at the yeah. hospital when his, when his firstborn was there and all that stuff. Yeah, you have any quorums with guys like KD, um, just guys in general in the league, in any sport? Doesn't have well, to be basketball. Do you have any problems with them? Signing four or five year guaranteed year guarantee contract, and the following year asking to be traded is that a big deal to you, or do you? Do you no, first, I, watch, I watch more football than I watch basketball. Right. I guess because I'm growing up here, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, you you see guys uh, 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 whining about stuff with all the money they make. Uh, some of the things Kyrie did, you know, you don't you don't like. Um, the guys make a lot of money, so. You know, they have to protect them with the rules. I don't like the rules, but then you think about it like, man, they can't play with our rules. Right. <laughs> they be hurt all, all year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, just get what you can. And stay up, be up, get, get as much as you can and get out as healthy as you can. That's what I say about a uh, professional sport. Mm -hmm. That was Sidney Moncrief told me one day. He got his last year, he came to Atlanta. I think somebody got hurt. And we signed Sidney, and I was like, in awe, Sidney, because – you know, it was Sidney Moncrief, you know. Mm -hmm. So I go over, I go, hey, man, <laughs> you know, you want your number? Because I had number four. Now. Right, so, right, right, <laughs> right. I remember, yeah, yeah. That's now, pretty said, funny. Oh, man, he said, you made that number, you, <clears throat> you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm just here, you know, to help you young guys come along. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. We've been friends ever since. <laughs> well, Sid is pretty cool. You're talking about a great human being. I, I really uh, have a lot of respect for mm -hmm. Sid, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, I, th th this is an honor. I'm so happy you, you, you took the time, and um, we'll do it again sometimes. Maybe we'll talk about relationships and try to find us somebody to settle down with <laughs> or something. Hey, but, hey, man, thanks for having me. You're the yeah. best. So, uh, you know, and it, I, I, yeah. I, when I, you can tell, you know, it's a lot of guys have podcasts, but yeah. <laughs> I respect you so much. I just I love it. Man, come I up, respect but, you as well, brother. And I, then, you know, relationships. I, I tell my buddies at the bar, like, hey, man, you that sound good in the bar. Uh, yeah. But in court, it might be different. But uh, it's, you know, we talk about it all the time. So it, it's no problem coming up because I can give my opinion of, yeah. as a single guy. And some guys that's been married in relationships, uh, you know, they can give their opinion on what they what mm -hmm. they think. And as as 
me being 59 years old, I, I know what a wife look like and what it don't look like. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, no problem. Well, thanks, brother. Yeah, thank we'll you. Talk soon. That's it for Harp's Court. Thank you.